this is our 2024 Pro Master Super High Roof. Really, most of the planning goes to figuring out what you're going to do. Once you got it figured out, it goes quickly. And so here, you can just see we sequence it out, set up the rails, mark their spots, drill a pilot hole, bore out with a step bit, prime the hole, place your rib nuts, and then you just go through, add your construction adhesive, and then mount the board permanently. For these top rails, I decided to do pocket holes at the top and a rib nut through the bottom part of their rail. Some people will do dimensional lumber and just do a straight shot from the floor to the ceiling here. And I originally thought I was going to do that, but because of the bed I bought and because I only have an inch and a half to play with, I decided to break it up into three sections like this. And I'm gonna contour the plywood panels on top of this to allow for the space of the one and a half inch gap that the bed will allow me. Now whether you do a straight shot from the floor to the ceiling with dimensional lumber or break it up like this, you can make a notch or a groove in this. So I just took a scrap piece of wood, templated out that edge of the top rail, the top horizontal rail, traced that, and then took a jigsaw to contour that line. Just drill your pocket holes and then you can attach it. I started using construction adhesive both on the top and the bottom um, just for efficiency's sake. I don't feel like switch, switching out to wood glue at the top. And I went back and forth here for the bottom section. Um, some sections I did rib nuts, sometimes they would spin out, so then I just switched to self tapping screws. The metal seems to be a little dense there, and the self tappers are hard to sink all the way through. For some rails, I had to sink a few of them. After all your vertical supports are installed, I went through and installed horizontal or just cross beams to provide some more support where I'll be attaching all the heavy components such as electrical and plumbing just to give it a little extra rigidity. From there, over top of the three quarter inch plot on the bottom one third section, I overlaid that ply with another half inch ply. For the middle section, I installed a quarter inch ply over the three quarter inch ply. This will create a gradual taper from the bottom section to the top section, which has no additional ply installed. So when I lay the panels down for the wall, it'll lay flush to the wood and give us the one and a half inch clearance for the bed frame to be installed. Here I am just repeating that process Installing the horizontal cross beams over the top of the bottom section, I'll install the half inch ply and for the middle section, I'll install a quarter inch ply. Moving on to the ceiling, I had to remove the light and the antenna for the keyless entry. I plan on relocating these to the garage space anyway. And again, I'm trying to avoid laying wood parallel to any metal surface as shown here, just to reduce the thermal bridging effect and to create a thermal gap. And this first ceiling strip is just a test run to make sure that it would even work. And that I like the amount of gap between the wood and the metal frame. And that gap is where I'll end up putting some insula insulation. And I should say again that we have a super high roof, so vertical clearance isn't really an issue. I think others with the low roof or even high roof may not go this route, especially if they're tall due to the ceiling constraint. So first I'll cut a board to length, then I'll lay it parallel to the metal rib. From there, I'll just mark 
the holes where I think I'm going to put the rib nut. I'm marking four on each rib, and then I'm also marking um, the middle line so I can center the rib nut to the board. After I mark the rib, I then place the wood on the middle rib to transfer those lines to the board. Once the lines are transferred to the board, you can take a speed square and just, and just mark the face of the board. Then taking another long board just to support your speed square, you can mark those center lines. Then you can use a straight edge to mark both ends of the board across the center. And the intersecting points will give you the place for the pilot hole and eventually the force snare bit. Here I'm attaching my spacers with wood glue and a couple staples. Here, you can drill your pilot holes for your bolt to eventually go through. You'll see me do the Forstner bit afterwards, but I would recommend doing this first and then dr drilling your pilot hole afterwards. You'll just get less slop when you're trying to drill the Forstner. And on the end holes, I would drill another hole just to give some sliding ability when I'm mounting the board to the frame. And I did not do it for the two middle holes because when you dry fit the board, you'll drill seamlessly through the wood to make a mark on the metal so you know where to bore out with your step bit. So get your board dry fit here. And then from there, you can push the board tight to the ceiling and then drill your pilot holes. Drilling your pilot holes, it'll make a mark in the middle. You can remove your board and swing it out of the way. From there, bore out your holes with your step bit so you can place your rib nuts. And you definitely want to hand tighten all these all the way flush to the wood. One, so you know that you get the board flush to the metal rib, but also if you try to force it in with a impact driver, it's likely that you'll spin out the rib nut. I also intend to take these back down when I insulate to put a piece of insulation between the metal rib and the board and fully adhere it down with construction adhesive and some thread block. And from there, it's just really repeat the same process for all the metal ribs. Also worth noting that this front rib is slightly taller than the rest and so pictured I have a quarter inch long piece of ply with a half inch spacer underneath. I went back and changed this to a quarter inch spacer underneath the three quarter inch long board for a total of one inch over top of the metal rib. Every other board was a half inch spacer underneath the three quarter inch board holding for one and a quarter inch height on top of the metal rib. <laughs> 